In this podcast, we have conversations about personal experiences with loss, grief, and unexplained spiritual encounters. Whether it's a dream, a visit, a vision, or a newfound life after loss, we believe life and love never dies. This is Surviving Death and Dying with Trisha and Misty. Welcome. We want to talk about dream visitations today. After you lose someone, some people claim they are visited by their loved ones and some people want to be visited. I even heard of pets visiting people in their dreams. I even thought my mom visited me, but I'm not quite sure if it really was her visiting. Misty, I've heard um, you've had some visitation dreams. Trisha, that is true. So I am curious to see why you're doubting. I know you've been, we've been looking into this a lot. So we're going to talk about and compare what your experience was with your mom's dream. But I know for sure I have had visits. My dad was the first one, actually, after he died, I was in my 20s. It was probably a year or so after he died. What I think distinguishes this, because my cousin who I'm very close with wanted to have dreams like I did and hadn't for a long time. And her brother had died when he was only 24. And so one of the things she and I talked a lot about was I said, you will just know because what happens in my experience is that I'll be in a dream. Nothing makes sense. And all of a sudden my dad shows up and it's like, I woke up out of the dream, dad, The dream falls away. I ran to hug him. And a lot of times the visit is just to know that they're okay, but you feel and you know it's real. But my dad, being that we had promised each other to visit, wanted to tell me three important things that he felt was important to me for me to know to improve myself in my life. And One of them sticks out in my brain right now because it was the one I was most shocked to hear and couldn't believe. The other two must have been something that I thought, yeah, okay, I get that. I could do that. But he had said, I took people for granted that hurt and shocked me. And even when I was talking to my husband about that recently, he's like, well, that's not you. And I said, well, that's because of that dream. (laughs) It really made an impact on me because I thought, what, what do you mean? It wasn't like a mean kind of a thing or a mean spirited. It was more just, I was so focused on myself and my own life and getting from one place to another that I wouldn't, it's almost like saying to stop and smell the roses. Right. Yeah. It's like stop to recognize people. Right. And with these dreams, did he actually talk to you saying these or did you have just like a feeling from this? You know, I'm not sure because my aunt has asked me about, have you heard, you know, a voice or she was curious to know when, when you said you dreamt of your mom, did you hear a voice looking back on that? Now I don't remember hearing a voice. I'm not sure. I just know there were things like that. So I'm sorry about that. And I haven't had one since probably 2009, there have been communication. So in this dream with my dad, this first one, I continued since from that point on to recognize people. If I saw a custodian or someone working, I, you know, and I would see them all the time where I worked, I would learn their name and say hello. And I would compliment, you know, and I, I really did work on that. I really did take that to heart, but I had another dream when I was pregnant with my twins, where my dad said, do you want to meet your daughter? And again, I can't tell you if it was actually hearing his voice or not, but of course I thought, yes. And he handed me a baby girl and I held a baby girl. And as wonderful as that was, and that was all that was in the dream, except that I do remember wondering, are you going to be busy? What are you doing? Are you going away? Why are you doing this? And it was just that no details, just knowing that, yeah, he had other things he was going to have to do. He would be busy. This is like his chance, his last chance. Again, he was going to not be around or be able to come visit me. Yeah. Cause I've heard that after a certain amount of time that they go into another stage Yeah, and then they don't come back into people's dreams anymore and visit their loved ones, which was kind of interesting to me. Yeah. So this 
did a couple of things. I was pregnant with twins. I did not know what sex they were. So number one, I thought one's a girl. <laughs> right. <laughs> and number two, I thought, is the other one not going to make it? So he really caused me some unneeded stress. Right. <laughs> yeah, I would have anxiety with that one. Yeah. So I... Having twins and being short, I was in the hospital early, but I had my twins at 29 weeks. I was in the hospital for a week before they were born. And a nurse was, I guess, reading their heartbeats and had asked, do you all want to know their sex? And we said, no. Someone kind of hinted that sometimes a male heartbeat is a different speed than a female heartbeat and that they were different. So already in my head now, I'm thinking one's a boy, one's a girl. Right. They did a C-section. It was emergency C-section a week later. And I remember them saying the first one's a boy. And I remember thinking the second one's a girl. And when the second one was a boy, for a fraction of a second, and if they hear this, this is the first time they're ever going to hear this, I was disappointed. Uh Uh-oh. Fraction of a second. Oh, I hated myself for that. Right. It was two boys, but I was confused. Because I thought, but I, what he was talking about then. Right. But I was still also, because they went home on heart monitors. They were born at 29 weeks. They were in the ICU for a couple months. Luckily they were, you know, very healthy. They had to be sent home on heart monitor. So for months, I was terrified that one of them was still going to die. So thanks dad. (laughs) Right. (laughs) That really didn't help me out at all. No, no, no. But a couple years later, and we'll go into another story. I was, first of all, I was told I could never have kids. So this is what happens when somebody tells Misty she can't do something. You gotta find a way. (laughs) Oh, I even showed up at that doctor's office with my twin boys. And he goes, whose babies are these? They can't be yours. I said, they are mine. But anyway, (laughs) two and a half years later, I ended up pregnant on my own. And with the twins, I did have doctor's help, but on my own and My husband and I said, it's a girl. We just knew. We're like, okay, here's the girl. And sure enough, it was a girl. And when she was born and I held her, I knew I had held her before. It was familiar. And that was beautiful. So what confused me, and I look back and I, and and I kind of want to say this to point out that just because someone dies and they pass over, they don't know everything. No. Dad still didn't know everything and he still wanted to communicate with me and it was wonderful. And I knew I'd held her before, but I also kind of went through a lot of heartache (laughs) trying to figure out what he meant. Right. So that's kind of weird. But the, the big thing I do know is when a visitation or what I believe a visitation is when it's real is that you kind of wake up out of your dream and it feels real and you remember it's different. Yeah. You remember I've, when I've read stuff about it, like I said, it says that you wake up from that dream and you go, you look around like it, you were awake and it actually happened. That's right. Okay. I'm getting, I'm understanding more of what they are now researching this. And it's another reason why I don't believe I. So you don't think, so hearing that and talking about that now, what was the visit from your mom like? It was like a normal day kind of thing. We were just doing everyday things. We were talking back and forth. So I did hear her voice. So it just was like, probably like a memory that I had of her when I was trying to breathe her. And I even talked to my brother to see if he had any either. And he's like, no, just memories of her. And I've talked to my sister and she's had visits. I know that. Oh, at least from what I remember her telling me, this was like a little while ago, but she has like a high like she can feel spirits easily as well. Is she an intuitive? Is she very tuned in? She is, which I can go more into detail about. We can maybe invite her to come talk to us on our podcast. Maybe we have to see, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just interesting to see here the different kinds of things that I've been reading and talking to people about having dreams about memories of their loved ones. Yeah. Like, talking to my sister who has actually had her as a visitation. Right. So that's, yeah, I was like, okay, I hear you mom, but hello. (laughs) And there is 
currently studies, I should have looked this up before the podcast today, because recently I've heard that there have been studies where people, they can induce a visitation dream now. Yes, because they said that you need to, I was reading on that, you need to meditate Mm -hmm. before you go, you ask the spirit that you want a visit from them. And it's not going to happen usually on the first time you do all this. But sometimes you might never even with the asking and all that, you might never get it. Like I said, they go on to the next their next phase. of Yeah. For me, I'm thinking now at this point, my mom has probably already moved on. How many years has it been? She passed away in 2012. Okay. So it's going on seven, eight years now. Okay. Yes, I have the feeling she's already moved past that, which is fine because I was there with her when she passed. So we had a little. Maybe that's the other reason why you haven't had that dream too, is you may have been more at peace with her loss or you got to be there. There was closure. Yeah, I think there might've been a little bit of closure. I mean, she was not conscious where she could talk at that time either. Right. But we had that conversation, like in that those last moments. So I, it was a very difficult time for me, which I'll go into more detail again in another podcast about losing my mom and all the steps that I had to take to get through the grieving on that. But I think I was at peace with it, but I still had a hard time grieving. Right. That makes sense. No, it does. It does. I hope it's not too late. And I hope she can still find a way to come to you. And I hope we are the first ones you tell when it happens. Right. And if not, even maybe my dad, talk to my dad. Yes. See if he can say that she's okay. She looked like, you know, right. Telling me what she wants to say. Right. You never know. And there is time. And it's interesting that you have found some ways to meditate and maybe ask, you know, his spirit to come to you. And I hope for you that happens. And I can't wait to see. Yeah, I'm going to actually be starting tonight and seeing how long that takes um, if he hasn't moved on. So Okay, we're going to see. Well, I hope that for you, because let me tell you, it is so wonderful. What I was saying about my cousin when she was saying that she wanted to have a dream like that, never had one. And I think she was kind of like you where she's like, I've heard of that. I don't think I've had that happen. When it did happen, she knew. Right. The truth of this story is that I actually got to visit the crossing over with John Edward show because I had a friend who was working in the control room and something when I was going to be in town something had gone wrong with their bookings and they needed people. And she said that never happened. They were usually backlogged. And she said, I think you need to be on the show. So of course my cousin said, you need to talk to Phil. You need to hear from Phil. I haven't heard from Phil. So I had three people in mind that I wanted to hear from that day and we'll save that for another day. But he did mention Phil. And the moral of this story was I froze. I felt like I let my cousin down to not get what she wanted. But what I didn't realize had happened was that until a week or so later when I talked to her, because I was afraid to talk to her. (laughs) I was afraid to go, okay, uh, I think he got to Phil and I froze. But she said, Misty, I completely forgot because I had a dream that very morning he came to me and she described it just like what we're talking about. She said she was having a dream and she looks over and there he is. And she said, he didn't say anything. He just smiled. She hugged him. It relieved so much grief in her. And I think that's, that's, what's really great and beneficial from these is you don't even have to believe in it for it to happen. Those are actually even the best stories are the people that don't believe in it. And it happens The the sad thing is they're afraid to talk about it. Yeah, it's something that's amazing and beautiful. I hope more people talk about this because it will help release what they're going through. Absolutely. And I was so happy that she had that experience. I think that's the only one she's had. I'm really not sure. But my dad appeared to me again. I just realized as we were talking much later and not as himself. And this is a weird one. So I, I'm only going to report this as my experience and what I observed. I dreamt of walking into my church from the back and 
a man passed me that I did not recognize. And for some reason in my dream, I stopped, turned around and went, dad. And he was in a baseball cap and it was not my dad's face. And he had this look of concern, didn't say a word. And that was it. And it, it st- again, it stuck with me. It felt real. I called my aunt the next day and I said, he's concerned about something, but he showed up as someone else. And I don't, I don't know why I don't understand. And I was, con- again, he was throwing fear at me for no reason. <laughs> Try to live your life without anxiety. Yeah. So, you know, if you, you know, I don't want people to have visitations that are going to make their life worse. Right. But what I found out was that night, my mom had found herself on a date that she didn't even expect to be on. And she was funny when she told me about it. She had been invited to judge a science fair with a retired principal. She was a retired teacher. They both, you know, he also went to our church and she had said his name. And I I knew the name because I knew his daughter from church camp, but I didn't really know who he was. And she said, I think we're on a date because afterwards we went to dinner and he opened the door for me and he pulled out my chair. And so she's like, I think I've had a date, you know, and she's all excited. And he had lost his wife to cancer some years back. So this actually turned out to be first dates for both of them. And it, it was an on and off relationship for a year. But when I went to church, I was asking my husband, okay, where is he? Who is he? Who is this guy? Who's this guy, Jack? Uh, and she he pointed him out and I was like, oh, that's that was the, the face. That's the face my dad showed me with concern. So now, of course, what do you think I'm doing for the next year that it's on and off with my mom and this man? Oh my God, making sure he's treating her right, man. I was so worried. I, and so like, I don't know exact dates, but it was around a year later. I I think I was crying because he would, I think emotionally for him and my mom, this dating someone for the first time after you'd been married a long time to the person who had, you know, had children with. It was, I think for both of them trying to figure out what did they want in life, but they were going to restaurants and concerts and my mom was enjoying life. And I was so worried he was going to break her heart. I was so upset one night. I kind of prayed and cried about it. That was a Saturday night. I go into church the next day, walking through the doors in the very spot of my dream up to my mom. And my mom shows me her finger and it has Ah. an engagement ring. And out of the weirdest unexpected wave of emotions, I felt both happy, hurt, shocked, sad, angry, all at the same time. (laughs) I was happy for her at first because whew, that fear of her getting her heart broken, I was so relieved. But then these backdoor feelings that I didn't expect were creeping in trying to wrap my head around my mom being married to someone else. Yeah. Letting go of my dad. I couldn't even sit through church. I went into the chapel to deal with my own emotions, as well as the fact that in that very spot of my dream, my mom shows me this engagement. And my dad's concern was for my emotions through this. Right. So you put those two two together and found out the Oh, and I left out, I, I just realized this prior to this, cause they got married in June. So the added layer on this was on mother's day, my husband and I had planned to do a catered lunch for our mothers. And after church, my mom is giddy saying, Jack's taking me out to lunch. And she was getting in the car with him and running off all happy. I'm an only child. Here's mom forgetting about me. Now I've lost my second parent. And that was before, actually, I'm, I'm a little foggy on what came first, the chicken or the egg there. I don't know if the engagement ring came first or not, but that was part of that concern my dad felt for me because I was so hurt and so upset and so mad. We went by our house, kids and my husband are in the car. I was supposed to pick something up so we could get in the car and continue on to his mother's for her lunch without my mom. And I ripped wallpaper off of my bathroom wall. Yeah, Cause you were so upset with your mom. 
Yep. Good to you. I was so mad and so upset. Now, look, granted, the paper, you know, it wasn't like it was new or anything. It was probably bubbling. It made it easy for me. <laughs> but I was so mad and so upset. I was ripping that wallpaper off. And what my aunt had to tell me was, Mother's Day is now for you. You're a mom. Let go of that. Yeah, you got to let go when you're grieving. And right. like all the different kinds of forms of grieving, you got to learn to let go a little bit. So here's the other reason I think he was upset when she told me what day she was getting married, which was the way she even said it. She just wasn't even thinking she was so happy. She was like a, you know, happy little kid. She said, we're getting married on father's day. Oh gosh. No. Yeah. Wait, wait to stick it to me. Do you right. really have to say that mom, you could have said a date and I, I wouldn't have connected the dots right away. <laughs> right. And you're giving yourself time to kind of. Right. So at the, the wedding and I'm a grown adult now, I have kids, his youngest daughter is my age. I actually went to summer camp with her when we were younger, we were both flower girls standing in the back and she looks at me and she goes, how are you doing? And I said, well, it's father's day. And she goes, oh yeah. She goes, well, on mother's day, he dumped off a bunch of my mom's boxes in my garage and I went through them crying in my neighbor. So they were just so happy. They forgot everything. So here we're left with this. We're happy for them, but we, you know, we love our, our deceased parents too. So it was kind of looking back on it now. It's kind of funny, but this makes sense. Now looking back at my dad's dream, why he was so concerned for me. Exactly. But him coming to me that way didn't help me. No, because you're trying to figure out everything. Why? And yeah. Right. So I, I think that's kind of cool. Um, but I had another dream later on. I, I was very connected with my grandmother. And there were a few years that I was actually feeling things she was feeling. And I've later learned that I am an empath. And I have a big story on that. Um, I was even... I even knew when she died and I was 16 miles from her. I knew at the moment she died. I want to save that one for another day, but she visited me in a dream. And again, it was, I'm dreaming, nothing made sense. Mama, I ran to her. She looked young. She smiled. I hugged her. I was so excited. And I said, oh, so how is it? Meaning where she is now. Right. And she said, it's not like what we were taught. And I just smiled real big. And I said, I didn't think so because I knew she was more traditional in a very Christian traditional sense. And I was just more of a open-minded spiritualist, I guess. And again, I couldn't tell you, I, I can't say I remember hearing a voice or I just know we communicated. And then my next immediate thought though, was one of my sons was, was really, really having a hard time with her death and grieving so badly that I had said, you need to go to him. You need to go to him. And she said, I can't because he is too, cannot remember for the life of me what the word was she said. It wasn't a normal everyday word or anything anyone would normally associate with grieving. I had to go to my aunt and say, mama came to me. This is what happened, but I don't understand why she, what she means. Garrett is too, and it, I almost equate it to saying it's like ambivalent. He's too immature. I don't know. It was a word you wouldn't normally use with grief. And, and we had to do a lot of digging. And my aunt finally found an old reference to, or an old use of the word meaning overwhelmed with grief. Right. Oh. We thought, oh, she can't get through to him because he is too grief stricken. That makes sense. Right. I thought that was cool. And it, there was a time later, cause I recently asked him, I said, did mom, did you tell me one day, you know, that mama finally came to you in a dream? And of course now he's like, well, yeah, you know, and then he, right. it was a little while later and it, he felt better. And I do remember when it did happen, he told me he was better because she let him know she was fine. And that he had had a visit. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It helped relieve somebody so much. 
So and and that always I mean, I mean for some people who still don't know if they believe in this or that they're skeptical, they they probably feel like what a a, a small message, but it's really what people need to hear is that they're okay. Yeah, most definitely. So that was my visits. I think those are the only ones I have had. I think it's interesting that you found something that made you rethink that yours were something different, but they still helped you with your grief, right? Yeah, most definitely. A release dream is just there. You're releasing your emotions and you're walking yourself and your dreams through your grief. And that's what helps you get through your grieving process. So now that I understand the difference between the two, yeah, I had a release dream, which was amazing because, because I heard my mom's voice, which is what I needed. I wanted to hear my mom's voice for the last, because I didn't hear it for a long time. So I wanted to hear her voice. And I think that's what helped me get through my grieving process. Right. All right, Trisha, I've got an idea. You're going to try to bring on a dream. You're going to follow these things you're reading. I'm going to look that up now. I want to find out. And we're going to share with people, other people out there who want to bring on and invite their loved ones to come visit them in a dream and what they should do and how and hear if it's worked for you. And I'm going to see if I could try it too. send me that link. And then let's talk about that again. Yes, of course, I will do that crossing my fingers that it happens so I can get more relief from my grieving with my dad. So hopefully I work through that next step. That's it for today. Thanks for listening. We'd love to hear from you. So email us at trisha.misty.tm at gmail.com. You can also go to our website, survivingdeathanddying.com for links to the books we talk about. So please like, share, subscribe, and follow. Well, we did it again. We survived death and dying another episode because we believe life and love never dies. You, you, you.